Hi, I'm Wes. In this lecture, we'll look at hydraulic design of culverts from module three. The module includes design flow, culvert sizing, and has a worked example. Before watching this lecture, you should read module three, pages 3-1 and 3-2, up to and including the section called no ponding. In designing a culvert, we want to determine the most economical size culvert that will pass the design flow without a large headwater depth, i.e. flooding at the inlet or excessive velocity causing scour at the outlet. The design flow can be based on the normal design flood that depends on the protection required and see page 3-1 in the class notes for more information on that. It can be based on the regulatory flood i.e. the regional being the Hurricane Hazel or the 100 year flood or whichever is worse. Or it can be designed on a fish passage flood likely to occur at migration and be suitable for fish passage, meaning it requires lower velocity, resting pools, lower hydraulic jump size, etc. A culvert may be designed using a no ponding method or a ponding method. The no ponding method uses the rational formula to calculate the design flow and then uses Manning's and the continuity equations to calculate the size that will be big enough to pass the design flow without causing any flooding or ponding. Recall that the rational formula is Q equal to 0 0.0028 times C times I times A and that I is equal to A divided by TC plus B to the power of C. Here TC is our time of concentration, and this is the time for water to get from the farthest point in the catchment to the outlet, equal to our inlet time plus the branch time. In module two, we saw that the upland method can be used to calculate TC, but there are other methods we can also include the airport formula is used where C is less than 0.4 and overland flow time or the inlet time is much larger than the channel flow time or branch time. The formula for the airport formula is TC is equal to 3.26 times 1.1 minus C times L to the power of 1 over 2 all divided by S to the power of 1 over 3. For this formula, TC again is our time of concentration measured in minutes, C is the runoff coefficient and this is unitless, L is the flow distance measured in meters, and S is the slope written in percent form. We also have the Bransby-Williams formula and this is used where C is greater or equal to 0.4 and overland flow time or the inlet time is much less than the channel flow or branch time. For this, we have the formula TC is equal to 0.057L divided by S to the power of 0.2 times A to the power of 0.1. TC, L, and S are the same variables as in the other equation. And here we have A, which is the drainage area measured in hectares. Let's look at an example, and this example comes from page 3-8. In the problem, we're given the area, which is 30 hectares, and that's variable A. L is equal to 600 meters. The slope for the main waterway is 0.5%. The slope for the culvert is 1.5%. Manning's N for the culvert is 0.024 and the intensity is given, or the equation for intensity is given for a 25 year storm. And this is I equal to 1,728 divided by TC plus eight to the power of 0 0.866. We're also given the C values and we're given that 60% is at 0 0.35 and 40% is at 0 0.25. First, we want to calculate our weighted C factor. 
and this is equal to 0.6 times 30 times 0 0.35 plus 0 0.4 times 30 times 0 0.25 all divided by 30. Plugging in those values we get a C factor of 0 0.31 and this is less than 0 0.4 so we want to use the airport formula to calculate TC. Again our airport formula is TC is equal to 3.26 times 1.1 minus C times L to the power of 1 over 2 all divided by S to the power of 1 over 3. We can plug in our variables and that gives us a time of concentration of 79.48 minutes. We can use that time of concentration to calculate our rainfall intensity and we were given that equation for the 25 year storm. So the intensity I is equal to 1,728 divided by 79.48 plus 8, all to the power of 0 0.866. And that gives us 35.96 millimeters per hour. We can then use our intensity into our formula for flow. So Q is equal to 0 0.0028 times C times I times A, or times 0 0.31 times 35.96 times 30. And that gives us a flow of 0 0.936 cubic meters per second. And you can recall from module two that for a circular pipe flowing full, we found the formula D for diameter is equal to 1.548 times N times Q divided by S to the power of one over two all to the power of three over eight. So we can calculate the diameter. So D is equal to 1.548, all times 0 0.024 times 0 0.936, divided by 0 0.015 to the power of one over two, all to the power of three over eight. And if we calculate that, we get 0 0.820 meters. And this would actually be the final answer since the question only asked for our theoretical diameter, which is the exact minimum size required. If we're actually sizing a culvert, we would pick the next larger size. So probably a 900 millimeter diameter culvert. So now you can go through and try problem number two on page 3-8. Note that in both questions two and three, an area on a certain scale plan is given from which you need to actually calculate the area or determine A. For example, in question two, again on page 3-8, an area of catchment is 16 centimeters squared on a plan that's at one to 5,000. So how would you go about actually calculating that? We would take the square root of 16 centimeters squared, which would give us a square area of four centimeters by four centimeters. If we take that four centimeters and multiply it by the scale of one to 50,000, we would get 200,000 centimeters squared. If we divide that by 100 centimeters per meter, we would get 2000 meters. So 2000 meters times 2000 meters would give us 4 million square meters. And again, we want that in hectares. So we would take that, divide by 10,000 meters per hectare, and that gives us 400 hectares. Thank you for watching this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll continue to look at hydraulic design of culverts from module three.